Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. I don't know about you, I'm definitely at that point of in between Christmas and New Year where I have no idea what day it is, what time it is, what's going on. But I did say in my last empties video, which went up on Christmas Eve, that I had three empties videos to try and get up between then and the end of the year so that we can do a sort of end of 2020 check-in of my makeup rehab progress and things. So this is the second of those videos and then there's one more to go. And that's it, I need to then do the admin and see what my totals have been for 2020, whether I've reached my goals, how much I've used up, how much I've reduced my stash by, etc, etc. So yeah, let's get on into this one. I used up two concealers, the first of which is the Collection Lasting Perfection Concealer, not that you would know that because the writing has all rubbed off it as it happens with these concealers. I've gone through a few, a few of these in my time. I think it's a budget concealer. It's great. It's definitely a little bit cakey. I feel like everyone used to say that but when I was younger I had very oily skin so things that were a little cakey on people who were dry in terms of like concealers under the eyes and things tended to not be as much of an issue for me but I feel like now I'm a little bit less oily and obviously a little bit older and I can kind of see this when I use it around my eyes and stuff. Although having said that this particular one was very old, so it could also be to do with the age of this product. Um, but I don't think I'd rush to repurchase this now again, but as I say, I'd gone through many of them in my time, so if I ended up with it again, I'm sure I'd manage to use up another one. And in terms of my totals, this was worth $5.45 towards my reverse rouge. The second concealer I've used up is worth $7.14 towards my reverse rouge, and if you've followed my project pan over on my Instagram which is Rose Keats Makeup Rehab if you're looking for the sort of project pan using what you've got content or just at Rose Keats if you're looking for more general lifestyle fashion bit of everything kind of content. I use them for two different purposes but I did my project pan over on my Rose Keats Makeup Rehab Instagram account and I finished this up as part of that. I'm glad to have finished it up. There's really no point in me talking any more about it because it's been discontinued. It is what it is, but it was worth $7.14 towards my reverse rouge total. I finished up two mascaras. So the smaller one is the Chanel Inimitable Intense Mini, which was worth $5.33. And then a L'Oreal Telescopic, which was worth $10.49. I really liked both of these. They're both very sort of plasticky bristled ones. So that is the Chanel one. And then L'Oreal one is skinnier again, but again it's those sort of plasticky bristles that really sort of fan your lashes out. So I really, really like these. I've realised I think it's because I've got hooded eyes, so these types of mascaras don't build up much volume, which means that actually I can like kind of let my eyeshadow be seen a little bit more, which if I've got a lot of volume in my eyelashes because of my hooded eyes, it just kind of means you just see eyelashes really. So. I really, really like these for that sort of fanned out, long length lashes that they give me, um, but they're not very volumising and that's not an issue for me. I would definitely have either of these mascaras again quite happily, but it is just something to bear in mind that that's maybe not what everyone's looking for in a mascara. And the last makeup product I used up was this Burt's Bees Lip Balm, um, totally old school. This was worth $3.59. It's towards my reverse rouge. As far as lip balms go, it did the job. I would definitely use it up again, um, so yeah, no complaints. They were my five makeup items worth a value of $32 exactly towards my reverse rouge. So on to skincare, I had quite a few makeup removers, so I'll pull them all out and talk about them as a group. So left to right there, we've got the Clarins Micellar Milk, which was worth $20. The Kiehl's Herbal Infusion Micellar Water, worth $4.48. The Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Cleansing Oil, worth $7.50. And then the Lazero Cleansing Polish worth $17. Clarins Micellar Milk is kind of what the name suggests. It's a micellar milk. Basically, I think I just prefer a micellar water. I felt like the milk was just that little bit more than being a water. So I didn't feel like I could get it kind of right up into my eyes. It had a bit more substance to it than water and I thought it would be a little bit less drying on my skin, which I do think it was, but I do feel in terms of like if I'm using micellar water, I know how to balance and put that moisture back into my skin when I'm using it. So I kind of feel like the, the benefits in terms of the hydration of this were sort of outweighed by the fact that I just felt it wasn't quite as good at sort of getting in at my makeup. And I didn't feel, it sounds really, really silly, but it basically didn't soak 
the cotton pad at, because it would sit on top of the cotton pad rather than the way that the washer sort of sinks into it. So I didn't feel I could sort of bend it around my eye shape quite as well. I know that sounds a bit mad, but yeah, I just didn't find it as user friendly as a normal micellar water. So I wouldn't repurchase this. I'd definitely stick to just micellar water in the future. However, I would not buy the Kiehl's micellar water. I thought it was awful. It didn't remove eye makeup. It took quite a few goes to actually just remove normal makeup. And when I was looking on the website to get the price for this, all the reviews of it were really, really bad. So I just, I don't think it's a very good product overall. It's not very effective. I just didn't like it and definitely wouldn't repurchase it. I also wouldn't repurchase the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Cleansing Oil. However, that's really a personal preference. I don't like, la well, not I don't like lavender, my skin doesn't like lavender, so I have to be really careful when I'm using it. It doesn't cause an irritation on its own, but if my eczema's flared up in anything, I find that anything that's got lavender oil in it will exacerbate the situation. Having said that, my gran absolutely loves this cleanser, so it is obviously personal preference, but it's definitely not for me. And then the last one is the Lazero Cleansing Polish. I've gone through quite a few of them in my time. I've got kind of nothing one way or the other to say about it. I'm sure I would buy it again in the future. I wouldn't rush to buy it. There's other things that I would prefer to try, like the thing that I have purchased to replace these, which I'll talk about in another video. Yeah, I don't think there's any rush to repurchase. In terms of serums, I finished this one from the Inky List. It's their 15% Vitamin C and EGF. It was worth 14 99 towards my Reverse Rouge. This was a repurchase, which I think really says it all. You know, I felt like it was good for my skin. It was quite a nice, like, thin consistency. And the price point's obviously very, very attractive. So, this was a repurchase. I then purchased one from The Ordinary to replace this, which will be in my next empties video. I, I basically just kind of fancied a change because I'd gone through two of these in a row, but I could definitely see me going back to this one. I have nothing bad to say about this and it didn't irritate my skin, which I kind of thought it might, especially because 15% is quite a high percentage of vitamin C, but I had no reactions with this whatsoever. So yeah, I'm sure I will end up with this again in the future. In terms of SPF, I used up this little Kiehl's Mini of their um, Ultralight Daily UV Defence. So this is the new formula that's got the blue writing on it, or the blue um, colouring here. So I've had the full size of the one that had the orange on it before, which I really liked. You know, I felt that that went into my skin really easily, absorbed really quickly. This one I felt was really thick. I didn't feel like it was ultralight at all. I felt like it sat in my skin for ages. It took ages to sink in and I really didn't like the smell of it. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't purchase this. And this was worth $4 towards my reverse rouge. I finished up this from Origins. It's their Clean Improvements, their charcoal mask, just a little mini one. This was worth $5.20 towards my reverse rouge total. Oh throwing it out there. Um, worth $5.20 towards my reverse rouge total. I have got loads of these and I will definitely go through them. It's just a kind of standard basic charcoal mask. I do find it can be a little bit on the drying side. I find the Kiehl's one is a little bit more forgiving but the Kiehl's one comes in a tub so it tends to dry out as in the product dries out more quickly whereas the Origins ones come in a tube. Overall I think the Origins one's probably a better packaged product. I will definitely go through the, the collection of these that I have. No complaints. Not going to spend too much time on this. I used up this Maison, um sheet mask worth $5 towards my reverse rouge total. Yeah, I finished this up. I thought it was fine. As I've said about sheet masks many, many times, I think they're much of a muchness and you can really only expect so much from them. I would buy it again, I would use it up again, I have no complaints, but I didn't think it was life changing. Five dollars towards my reverse rouge. Two similar products, this time specifically for eyes. First of all, the Creme Shop one worth four dollars. I won't talk too much about this because I talked about it in my last empties video, but definitely would repurchase that. Felt like it was a really good mask. And felt again, I said before, like this was quite a big one. A lot of the eye ones are literally just under eye patches. This was like the whole kind of top half of your face so I felt like you got quite a lot of mask in here which I'm always into. These ones are the Rodeal Dragon's Blood Eye Mask worth $6. I do definitely see a difference when I use these under eye patches but it's not a long term thing it is just like an intense boost of hydration so ideal before a night out or something like that and I actually asked for some of these not this brand but I asked for some eye masks for Christmas so I do enjoy using them and I do see a benefit to them. I just don't think they're life-changing either. It's kind of one of those ones. 
Um, but yeah, this gave me six dollars towards my reverse rouge total. I finished a mini of the Origins Modern Friction. This was worth four dollars and eighty cents towards my reverse rouge total. I feel like this really dries my skin out. I feel like I can feel my skin tightening as soon as I use this to a very sort of uncomfortable point. So I definitely wouldn't repurchase this. I ended up actually using this up in my body rather because I didn't want to put it on my face because it makes my facial skin just so uncomfortable. But even using it in my body, like my skin tightens when I use this, like it really, really doesn't agree with me at all. I am not a fan of this product and I am very glad to have used this little one up as a body scrub and be able to get it out of my life. Worth $11.05 I finished up this Champneys um, Good As New Warming Body Scrub. So this was a bit of a faff, this is one you had to put on dry skin and like lather up and it heats up and then you get into the shower and rinse it off. Which I would definitely use if I thought it was really effective, that is not so much of an issue. But I didn't think it was very effective. It was a really sort of sticky gel texture and there really wasn't very much scrubbing involved. I didn't feel like it was an exfoliator in the slightest despite being called a scrub. Really not a scrub, it's really not exfoliating. A body scrub that I did really enjoy was this one from Melary. So this was worth $9 towards my reverse rouge. And again, you put that on dry skin so that's not really my issue. But I felt this one was far more effective as a scrub. And this is one of the chemical ones that's got both chemical and manual exfoliators in it and I used that in conjunction with the Ameliorate Transforming Body Lotion again worth $9 towards my reverse rouge total and I very much enjoyed using both of them I would buy both of these again. Another body moisturiser that I finished if you can read that there um, is this Davines one it's the SU After Sun range um, and this was a really really lovely body lotion I liked the smell of it it was really sort of a sort of very thin consistency that really absorbed into the skin very quickly but still felt robust in terms of what it actually did for the skin. Obviously we didn't really get anywhere on holiday this year. I feel like this it is an after sun product and I feel like it would be a beautiful product to use if you wear somewhere sunny to apply into your skin at night after being in the sun all day, you know, which is what it's designed to be used for. I would definitely purchase it again to use it for that purpose and um, I really enjoyed using it and yeah I thought it was lovely so would definitely repurchase this one and it was worth $30 towards my reverse rouge total. I also really appreciate this packaging because you can get like literally every last drop out of it. So yeah, big fan of this one, would repurchase. And the last skincare sample that I used up was this Sashi sample worth $1 of the Body Shop's Japanese Matcha Tea Pollution Clearing Mask. This, I've kind of spoken about pollution products before obviously, we really can't measure them. So this just felt like a kind of mud mask and it was pleasant to use and I would definitely use it again. So yeah, no complaints about that one. So that is my little collection of skincare that I finished up. It was 16 items worth $153.02 towards my reverse rouge total. And on to hair care. In terms of shampoo, I finished the Davines Love Shampoo. This was worth $28 towards my reverse rouge. I previously finished up the conditioner and I've spoken about that. This is an anti-frizz range which my hair can get a little bit frizzy. But my hair is very, very fine and I felt like this was just too heavy for it. I think in terms of getting rid of frizz it's probably great if you've got really thick coarse hair but it was just too overwhelming for me. It just kind of made my hair really greasy, really oily, it really weighed it down um, so I definitely wouldn't repurchase this one. In terms of like the way this came on my inventory, it's classed as a conditioner. I feel like next year I'm going to move this product into like a sort of separate category. Um, it's the Davines Alchemic Copper Conditioner so it is a conditioner, it's really more of a mask though and it deposits colour. If you've followed my channel this year, you've seen this one. So I bought this when we went into lockdown and this is the colour red. So I usually use the copper one. That's what I purchased in the past, that's what I've gone through and that's one that I will repurchase in the future. This when I first used it was just a little bit too bright kind of reddish pink for my tone. However, by the end of the first lockdown when my hair was like so faded because I hadn't been to the hairdressers in months. This actually, you know, even though it was maybe more red than I was looking for, it gave my hair a little bit more life. So I did eventually use it up and it was worth $31 towards my reverse rouge total. So I won't purchase this one again in the future. I'll stick to buying the copper one. Um, But yeah, I finished it up. So that's the main thing. It didn't go to waste. I used up two Kiehl's conditioners. So the amino acid one's a sort of coconutty smelling one. 
I really liked the smell of it and it was worth $2.85 towards my reverse rouge and the sunflower one was worth $7 towards my reverse rouge. I thought these were both just fine. I wouldn't rush to repurchase either of them but I also have no complaints if somebody bought me either of them again I would use them up I also wouldn't go out of my way to get them I feel like I've had other hair care that you know I like the Davines copper range I asked for some Olaplex things for Christmas because I'm very interested in trying them and I've had other shampoos and conditioners in the past that I've liked just as well as I've liked these particularly ones from the likes of John Frieda etc um, spring to mind I really like the John Frieda full repair range and the John Frieda range for red hair and they're obviously much more budget friendly than going to Kiehl's so these were fine I would use them up again if I got them but I wouldn't rush to repurchase either of them although I do know that lots of people are very dedicated to the amino acid range um, so yeah it, it could still be worth checking out but I feel like for me there are other things at a lower price point that do just as good a job so I don't think I'd rush for either of these again and the last product that I finished up is from Kiehl's again and it is their all fruit oil deeply reparative hair pack which was worth $25 towards my reverse rouge. Again my hair is quite fine, this really was a little bit overwhelming for it, kind of weighed it down so I don't think I'd rush to repurchase it but I do have to say I definitely felt how nourishing it was for my hair. When we were in lockdown the first time basically I would put this on and just like leave it on overnight kind of thing and wander about because nobody was seeing me and I could always tell you know what a difference it made to my hair how much like smoother and silkier my hair was for it but I did feel like I could never really get the volume into my hair in terms of styling it but as I say through the first lockdown I wasn't really styling my hair so that wasn't a huge drawback. In terms of a return to normality though this probably isn't the best hair product for me so I probably won't repurchase it. I feel like anyone with sort of drier coarser hair then mine would see a huge difference using this. Like I essentially think this is a great product but it's just not really designed for my hair type. So in terms of hair, that was five hair products that I finished up worth $93.85 towards my reverse rouge. And so that brings us to the end of another box of empties. Altogether, this box is worth $278.87 across 26 items. Hope you've enjoyed watching this. If you've got any questions about any of the products, leave them down below. Thank you very much for watching it. I hope if you celebrate Christmas that you've had a lovely Christmas. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you've just had a nice week. Happy holidays. And I will speak to you in my next video. Bye.